Here, the Merengues are in the throes of their greatest ever moment. This is their culmination of domination of the earliest years of European champion football history. This was to be their fifth consecutive European Cup triumph and the most stylish. They eventually ran out 7-3 winners against Eintracht Frankfurt in front of an awestruck, mesmerised Hamden Park crowd. The Germans were no pushovers, having put 12 past the hometown side Rangers in the previous round. They even managed to get themselves 1-0 up after 18 minutes. Real then clicked into gear, realising that they could overpower the Germans in midfield they started a passing carousel and dismantled Eintracht with a clinical blend of precision and showmanship, devastation and flamboyance. In a crescendo of style, Real Madrid cemented their place at the summit of the game. This legendary flourish, the only moment a team has ever won five successive European Cups. The 1960 final forever remains the quintessential European Cup final. Things could have worked out so very different as just seven years before this match. Barcelona were in the ascendancy in Spain with two league titles in two years and a deal to sign football's hottest property in the world at the time Alfredo Di Stefano. For Real President Bernabeu and state officials, the situation required urgent attention. Di Stefano had left FIFA's jurisdiction and was playing in Colombia with Millonarios. Because Colombia was not part of FIFA, Barcelona had to wait until his contract was up there in 1954 in order to formalise the signing. In an astonishing, extraordinary set of circumstances that followed, Real Madrid were able to sign Alfredo Di Stefano after the Spanish Minister for Sport, General Moscardo, and close friend of Bernabeu basically extorted Barcelona of their player by subjecting their president Marty Carreto to torturous negotiations after which he was sacked by Barcelona. The European Cup hegemony of Real Madrid was first penetrated by Benfica. After their fifth consecutive triumph, it was Barcelona who knocked the Merengues out for the first time in the first round of the 1960-61 season. And then in the final, on the 31st of May 1961, the Lisbon club, Benfica, defeated Barcelona 3-2 in the final, in Bern. After that success, a 19-year-old Eusebio was introduced to the first team. In their 1962 semi-final, Benfica were up against English double winners Spurs. Benfica's 3-1 first leg victory in Lisbon was too much of a hurdle for Spurs to overcome as the Lily Whites could only manage a 2-1 scoreline in front of more than 64,000 spectators at White Hart Lane. Real Madrid 6-0 aggregate winners over Standard Liège in their semi were to be the Portuguese opponents in the final. 
Real Madrid, 6-0 aggregate winners over Standard Liège in their semi, were to be the Portuguese club's opponents in the final. And, as you are seeing here, it was another game for the ages, as Benfica summoned superhuman strength to overcome Real after coming from 2-0 and then 3-2 down to win 5-3 and signal a legitimate shift in footballing power from Madrid to Lisbon and from Di Stefano to Eusebio. And there's trouble already. There's a fight going on in the middle there. Well, this looks like turning into a real battle. There's two Chileans down on the field. And what a scene after just five minutes play. And Perini took a kick at a player then. Well, this is absolutely ridiculous. Perini took an open kick at the, a player who was nowhere near the ball. And he's off the field. He's being set right off. And the police are being called on, or the army, the police in fact. Well, there's one of the sorriest and most stupid, incredible spectacles I've ever seen anywhere in the world. Lionel Sanchez. And there we go again. That was one of the neatest left hooks I've ever seen. Well, David is absolutely out cold. Oh, that was one of the worst tackles I think I've ever seen. Sanchez bought it right in the face. That was David, and he's off the field. Well, Italy down to nine men. Well, that was one of the most cold-blooded and lethal tackles I think I've ever seen. Sanchez, remember, was the man who took a swing at David a few minutes ago. Well, David's got ample revenge and the worst possible way. And so we go now into the second half of what is sure to be known as the Battle of Santiago. Navarro. Aramirez. And there it is! And the stadium's erupted. Every man in the crowd's on his feet. It's time for us to Mora. Oh, we're getting a rugby match and a fight, everything going in there. Well, how can Aston could possibly keep this game going? One they hardly think. Oh, and a great shot and a great goal. Well, the humiliation of the Italians is now complete. Chile just stroking the ball about. No attempt made to play the ball at all. That was Salvadore. I think the game is over. Ken Aston on his way to the dressing room. I don't think there's ever been a football match played like this in Chile or indeed anywhere else in the world. Foul play defined the 1962 World Cup. Violence on the pitch marred the match played between Chile and Italy and Pele was injured in the second game against Czechoslovakia. And Pelé was injured in his second game against Czechoslovakia. In such a setting, it was Garincha, known as Little Bird Who Soared Highest. In such a setting, it was Garincha, meaning Little Bird Who Scored Highest. In such a setting, it was Garincha. Nickname, meaning, in such a setting it was Garincha, a nickname meaning Little Bird, who soared the highest. Already the most unlikely of stars, Garincha was born into desperate poverty in a backwater town, 
medically certified as a cripple due to the fact that his left leg was six centimeters longer than his right. He drank alcohol and smoked throughout his life. By the time he died, he was a penniless alcoholic who left behind three ex-wives, including the legendary samba singer Elsa Suarez and 14 children born to five different women, including one in Sweden, the scene of Brazil's first World Cup success. Grinch's style of play was so unconventional and instinctual, he was, at his best, virtually unplayable. Grinch's style of Grinch's style of play was so unconventional and instinctual, he was, at his best, unplayable. After Real Madrid's early stranglehold on the European Cup, thanks to the presence of Di Stefano, the next footballing force to dominate the competition had been Benfica, who secured back-to-back wins in 1961 and 1962. In 1963, when Benfica reached a third consecutive final, they were faced with a cynical, counter-attacking Milan at Wembley Stadium. The Italians' win was a significant mark on the game, as it signalled the dominance of the defensive style of play that had been the hallmark of the 1962 World Cup. When Brazil lifted the Jules Rimet Trophy in 1958, the average goals per game in the tournament had been 3.6. By 1966, however, the average had dropped to a more moderate modern style level of 2.6. The principal reason being that most teams now employed four defenders. When the Brazilian Altafini's two second half goals brought the title to Italy for the first time, the football world had lost some more of its innocence. If there is a single man that can claim to be the father of modern football, that man is Viktor Maslov, the first inventor of the 4-4-2, and no coach since has been as influential regarding the formations with which the game is played. Maslov like Alf Ramsey did for England, withdrew his wingers, converted forwards to midfielders and played with a bolstered midfield. His tactical system relied upon zonal marking and pressing, closing down opponents and denying them space and time. As pressing demanded almost constant movement from his midfielders, Supreme physical fitness was required of his players. Maslov pioneered the scientific approach to understanding nutrition and conditioning. Maslov also instigated the move to only two forwards, explaining that football is like an aeroplane. As velocities increase, so does air resistance, and so you have to make the head more streamlined. He came upon his ruthlessly efficient system while managing Dinamo Kiev, who played the prototype of total football with complete interchangeability of positions.